Good morning. It's a slippery slope. Morning, Happy Pastor. Resurrection Day, folks. Amen. Here comes Brother Rick. Um, hey. Happy Turkey Day. Happy Resurrection Day, brother. I'm making my corn casseroles. My mom is making your corn casseroles. Here we are, live, folks. For us to hear um, at home. Oh, oh there, there, there. A couple of things I wanted to cover before we get started in today's message. Um, we ought to be praying for those people in, in Kentucky uh, because the governor has ordered an issue, uh, a order if. Anyone is found at church, they will take down their license plate and then within 14 days put them in lockdown and quarantine them. Uh, also, in the state of uh, Mississippi, Greenville Temple Baptist Church, if you haven't heard, what they were trying to do in order to comply with the governor's rule in Mississippi for their um, social distancing was to broadcast the sermon in on the radio so people brought their cars to the church and i don't know how i got it set up but they were listening to the church service in their car oh being obedient to the governor's order for social distancing uh and then the police came broke the social distancing rule and cited every person that was there giving them a 500 hundred dollar ticket um which is absolutely horrible. Uh, the United Kingdom has made an announcement that they're going to remain on lockdown for another year. Um, and this is a quote from Candace Owens, the, the lady we were just talking about. Uh, she said, flu and heart disease are also counted in the COVID death toll. Isn't that fascinating? So what's happening? I mean, is it, is it, we're really engaged in a real pandemic, or are they planning this as a pandemic to just issue their control on us? And that's where we're at. We're being very well controlled, very well herded. Um, <coughs> good news, so winning, we will be going to Fallis after church. Uh, the manager there has agreed to allow us to set up a table. Uh, and we'll be able to talk to people and pray for them and offer them the gospel. Now later, uh, after all that, obviously we're meeting here at 3 o'clock for the uh, potluck. I'm going to video call uh, our satellite member up in Kamloops. And uh, that way you all can say hi and, and uh, you know. Uh, try and get a little fellowship in with uh, Brother Ben. He's probably got it harder than most because there is no church for him out there in Canada. Uh, he's got, you know, all of them are old IFB that are relatively close within two hours. And the, the anybody that has like-minded beliefs, which would be Shore Foundation North, Aaron Thompson's uh, other church, is five hours from Ben. So... That's why he's a part of Redeemed Baptist as a satellite member, and we're grateful for him. Uh, but uh, yeah, we want to make contact with him and uh, wish him well on, on Resurrection Sunday. Um, and that's it for this. We, again, we want to pray for these people. They're having, you know, some states are better than others as far as understanding the importance of church. Um, but, you know, the reality is that you also want to be conscious of other people's feelings. Because we are given so much misinformation, okay, we know it's there, okay? It, it, it's obvious because it's been there for a while. I mean, if you, you've ever purchased a Lysol can, Corona's been on there. Um, but we've got so much misinformation and we want to make sure that everybody is comfortable, even with our, our soul winning this afternoon. Uh, we're going to make sure that we have some distance for you know making people feel comfortable. We're not going to be shaking hands and stuff like that. So uh, again, it's we want to make sure that people's feelings are respected. All right, so let's pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for sending your Son that we may have salvation through Him. Lord, we are grateful for this day. He rose from the grave and and sprinkled His blood upon the mercy seat. That way, we all can have salvation. 
uh, His atonement for our sins. Lord, we pray for those who are not here today. I pray that they have uh, been able to log in and watch us live and uh, be a part in, in, in the fellowship in this way and receive the message and, and understand uh, Christ's life and, and what He's done for us. Lord, we ask for blessing upon the soul winning and uh, we turn the service into your hands. In Jesus Christ's holy and righteous name, amen. Amen. So the title of today's sermon is uh, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani, which is, again, Aramaic, which we were talking about earlier. And it means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So we know this, and we're going to be doing a reading from Matthew 27. Today's sermon, I'm going to take you on a journey. I'm going to take you on a journey from prophecy, from the Old Testament, and how Christ fulfilled it, from the time of his birth on into uh, his crucifixion and give a detailed account of that. So if you would join me in Matthew 27, today's reading, it's quite a long reading, so please bear with me. Matthew 27, when the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they had led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor, then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned and then I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou, see thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priests took silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for him to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and brought him with, with them to Potter's field to bury, the, bury strangers in. Wherefore the field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver and, and price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value and gave them to the potter's field and the Lord appointed me and Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him saying art thou king of the Jews and Jesus said unto him thou sayest and then he was accused of the chief of priests and elders and he answered nothing and Pilate unto him heardest thou not how many things they witness against thee and he answered to him never a word insomuch that the governor marveled greatly now at the feast, the governor was, was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would, and they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto him, Whom will he that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. And when he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? And I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. And the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. When the governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? And they said, Barabbas. And Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ. And they said unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. And Pilate saw that he could not prevail nothing, but that they rather tumult was made. He took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. They answered, and all the people said, his blood be on us and our children. And they released Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him up to be crucified. And the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto them the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him, and they put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him. And they took the reed and smote him on the head. 
And after that they had mocked him, and they took the robe off of him, and they put him on his raiment on him, and they led him away to crucify him. And they came out and they found a man of Cyrene, Cyrene, excuse me, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear the cross. And when they were come unto the place called Golgotha, the, that is to say, the place of the skull, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him, parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted garments among them, and upon the vesture did they cast lots. And the sitting down, they watched him there, and they set over his head his accusations written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they the past were reviled, reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou wilt destroy us the temple and buildest it in three days. Save thyself, if thou be the Son of God. Come down off the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders. He saved others, himself cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if, we, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God, and the thieves also which were crucified with him cast them the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over the land, and upon the ninth hour, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, saw that he, this man called for Elias, and straightway went them, ran, and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. And the rest said, Let it be let us see whether Elias will come and save him. And Jesus when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielding up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints were slept arose, and came out of the graves after the, his resurrection, and into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him, watching Jesus, saw earth, the earthquake, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly this is the Son of God. And many women were there, beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and Joses, and the mother of Zebedee's children. And when the evening that was come, there came a rich man, Arimathea named, uh, from Arimathea named uh, Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. And he went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus that the Pilate commanded the body be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and he laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock, and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulchre. Now the next day that followed the day of the Preparation. The chief of priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that, they, that the de deceiver said, While he was yet alive, after three days he will rise again. Command it for that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come at night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He has risen from the dead, so the last era shall be worse than the first. And Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch. Go your way, make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. So Christ persecuted and powerful statement, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Again, this is all prophetic fulfillment. The Bible said in 1 Peter 1.20, Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in the last times for you. And, is, is, and this is life eternal, 
that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, who thou hast sent. John 17, 3. So prior to the entire world, the universe, and all things, Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit foreknew that Jesus had to come, live sinlessly for 33 years, and endure persecution unto death. He was fully aware. Can you imagine that for just a moment? You're living your life knowing that someday you're going to be crucified. You live with that thought. You live with the thought of knowing how much wrath had to be poured out to atone for the sins of the whole world. And it is his heart that we see here in John 17. If you have time, I recommend you spend some time in John 17. That was his last prayer. That we may know him. So many people take for granted the work of Christ, Christ in general. It's become uh, uh, a profane word amongst many. Christ was born in fulfillment of prophecy. He was born humble and in danger. He grew up knowing his life was ransom. He waited on God for all of his life uh, to start his ministry. He was denied by the very people that he came to save. He started teaching at the age of 12. It started, excuse me, he started teaching uh, 12, uh, which later turned to 11. Uh, one of them went to hell. And then, of course, Paul being the uh, replacement, if you would, uh, to preach the whole gospel to the whole world. He made brothers of them in a short time. Within three years of saying, follow me, he made brothers of these men. The relationship that was there between Christ and the Apostles was very intimate. He was betrayed and arrested. He stood trial for the crimes he didn't commit. He was persecuted, tortured, and resurrected for our sins and gave the last sermon on the Mount of Galilee. This is a well-known story, yet some will know Christ and be left out. Those who seek to know will enter therein. So we're going to take this journey through the Synoptic Gospel and, and of course, going back to the Old Testament for, for prophetic purposes, understanding what Christ fulfilled. The Bible says, Therefore the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call His name Emmanuel. That's to say, God with us in Isaiah 7.14. Emmanuel is not a name that was given to him. It was referring to who he was. God with us. Intending to know us. That was 700 years before his birth. 700 years. They were expecting a lion and received a lamb. To this day, they're still looking for that warrior like David. Of course, I'm referring to the Jews. They will get him. They will get the Moshiach that they're looking for, but it will not be Christ. He who hath not the Son hath not the Father. Amen? And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the, and the fear of the Lord, Isaiah 11, 2. And the prophecy fulfilled in Luke 2, 49, and said, He said unto them, How is it that he sought me? With ye not that I must be about my father's business. At 13 years old he was teaching in the temple <coughs> as a person with spirit and knowledge because he was God in the flesh even as a child. That thought alone leads to many other thoughts. We don't have to go down that rabbit hole. The Lord didn't include his childhood for a reason and whatever that reason is just and good. I will decree thee, the Lord hath said uh, unto me, Thou art my son, this day I begotten thee. That's Psalm 2, verse 7. 
Again, prophecy fulfilled. After 30 years of waiting, the Father witnessed Christ. King David had written that psalm hundreds of years prior. And Jesus spake and said unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have light of life. John 8, 12. He came to guide us. But some of his messages were meant to bewilder. To this day, many of his parables are confusing to people. And those people may stay bewildered. Some will come to church and study on their own and with brethren and seek to understand, seek to learn, seek to know Christ. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Matthew 3.17 Heard by many and few knew. To this day, it's the same. Nothing's changed. Nothing new under the sun. Many people know of Christ, but do not know Him. Christ offers His first ministering to the first angel in chapter 4 of Matthew. Get, hence, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him thou shalt serve. Matthew 4.10 a powerful message in that text. He spoke of himself as noted the type set of Lord. He was referring to himself as God. And the devil obeyed. The next thing you see in the Bible is Christ gathering his disciples. The good shepherd does. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Matthew 4, verse 19. It was spoken after Christ, had, uh, uh, after Christ had given Peter a little shaking up in that moment. Just kneeling before the Lord. And Peter and Andrew dropped their nets and followed. But not all did. He's despised and rejected of men, men of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And he hid as he, he, and we hid as he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Isaiah fifty three three. The prophecy of denial from the Jews. Turn with me to Matthew nine. Taking you on this journey, I want you to have a mental picture in your mind of our Lord, not Kaiser Borgia. You don't have to have a visual image, folks. You just have to have an image of what He's done for us. Matthew chapter 9, verse 11. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said, well, back up to 10, And it came to pass that Jesus sat at meat in the house, and behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth, and I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Still, even in the presence of God, they reject Him. Still, even in the presence of God, they mock Him. Sick with the stench of their rotten sin. Not some, but all mankind throughout generations then and now. The family of God is real. This kinship we have is real. It is actually greater than our earthly blood relatives. Because this is eternal. Eternal. 
The very reason we cling to one another and seek the kinship and brotherhood. Yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of the bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Psalm 41.9 Again, prophecy fulfilled. Judas, a brother, betrayed Christ. How would you feel if someone you loved turned their back on you in such a heinous way? Again, keep in mind, Christ loved Judas. How would you feel? And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them and take, eat, this is my body. And he took up the cup and when he gave thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. Mark 14, 22 and 23, which we will be doing later today. Taking of his body. The bread. The bread. The word. And drinking of his blood in remembrance of that blood that has washed us clean. That blood that was necessary for our atonement. And it was a lot of it. What better way to know than to ingest the living bread and living word of God? After they ate, Christ took them to Gethsemane and told them to stay awake and watch. Did they? <laughs> no. And what they saw was Christ's prayer for the most part until they all fell asleep. His passion for us, his desire to know us and love us uh, was great. His prayer, you'll find again in chapter 17, was all about each and every one of us. He prayed in such a passion to our Father, the blood spilled from His pores and His eyes. This is something we can't comprehend because we don't have that level of compassion and love. We don't know. We get a glimpse of it. We get a, a tiny savor of it. We will not be fully aware until we are engulfed in His glory. This prayer was ended with a slap. The betrayal had come. Brought the soldiers who were seeking him. Plotted against him from the, the, the Sadducees and Pharisees had come to an end. The capture of the king. But not before Peter can show some passion of his own. It was a vile passion against uh, what Christ had taught. It, it would, wouldn't have been the first time Peter would suffer his own sins. It wouldn't be the last. Christ was taken away to stand trial. No, be quite honest. I probably would have drawn a sword too. My king. They're, they're trying to take my king. Yeah, I'd take a soldier's ear. Maybe even worse. Is it right? No. Because prophecy had to be fulfilled. As well as he was beaten and mocked along the way, the chief of priests and all the council sought witness against Jesus to put him to death and found none. Mark 14, 55. And Jesus said, I am, in the bold proclamation, the reflection of, of the Old Testament, when God had told Moses to tell them, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Mark 14, 62. Pilate asks if he is the king of the Jews. And Jesus replies, matter of fact, and the Jews wanted to trade a murderer for Christ. They would have Barabbas free and Christ crucified. What a heinous, despicable trial. Pilate tried to wash his hands, but there's no turning back. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grieve. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed and shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Isaiah 53.10 That verse in Isaiah 53 is found in a synoptic gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Matthew 27, verses 33-44. Mark 15, verses 22-32. through Luke 23, uh, verses 33-43. And John 19, 17-30. So that very prophecy was fulfilled and accounted all four men gave an account of this. 
<laughs> In fact, to go a step further, there were five secular accounts of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. No other piece of history is that validated. Nine complete accounts, 500 witnesses to the death, burial, and resurrection. Nothing in history has that much validity. Why? Because there has to be no shadow of a doubt that He is God. And the world still denies Him. The Bible says in Romans 1, they are without excuse. The scourge of His flesh which were whipped with lead balls, perhaps even stones or metal hooks. Mm -hmm. Opening his flesh from his back of his head down to his buttocks like peeling an orange. The Romans had a rule about whipping. It must be done 39 times to be done properly. They placed a crown of thorns upon his head and opened up more flesh, pouring out more blood. After beating someone, mocking and spitting him as he was carrying a nine foot tall piece of cypress, six foot wide cross. The cypress was used, not uh, Catholics are wrong. <coughs> they can gather all their stories about how many different fancy woods that they made Christ's cross out of. The Romans didn't care. Mm -hmm. They were executioners and they used what was available. Moreover, the cypress, when it's peeled, excuse me, has a pungent aroma which covers the stench of death. So this massive cross, weighing probably about 200 pounds, he had to carry it a quarter of a mile to Golgotha. Calvary, the place of the skull. That's a long way to bleed with 200 pounds on your back. The Bible says that as they came out of the found a man of serene Simon by name, him compelled to bear the cross, Matthew 27, 32. Incidentally, if you didn't know, that's an Ethiopian. He was a black man. He didn't know Christ, but he was compelled to help him carry that beast of a cross as he's he unrecognizably beaten, the flesh coming off of his body, With the summit of cavalry, they dislocated his elbows and his shoulders. They broke his. They, they didn't break his legs. That was something that had to be fulfilled in prophecy. He was the only one that didn't do that to for a reason. They wanted to live longer. They took five-inch nails, severed the ligaments in his wrist, mm. not in the hand, folks, because if you're hung by a nail, it'll come right through. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they put it in the wrist. And when that nail was driven through the cross, they bent it so that it wouldn't come out. And then they exaggerated his hand, stretched six feet. Perched his legs, bent, and they nailed through his feet. Christ had to press down on his legs so that he can gather enough air in his lungs to speak. His lungs were filling up with blood and fluid. And they hoisted Christ in the air with a sign about his head, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The acronym for that in, in written, uh, you've seen them before, I-N-R-I being the Latin I and B I being the Greek and Y H B H being the Hebrew tetragrammaton for Yahweh or Jehovah. Bleeding. Non-stop. I mean he didn't stop, he didn't stop bleeding. The skin was off of his body. Bones were broken, dislocated. And he still made time to give salvation to a thief. Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 43. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? 
Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring, Psalm 22, verse 1. He was mocked while he was on the cross. They said, if he's really the Messiah, why didn't he come down off the cross? He could have had legions of angels to rescue him. And all this so we can know him and have salvation. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. The first time I preached the resurrection, I realized what that meant. Many scholars will tell you that it was because God doesn't look at His Son because He made Him sin. As a father, can you look upon your child when you're pouring your wrath out on him to save the world? It choked me up. I was looking at my own something. I couldn't look. That's where God the Father was at when He sees His Son just completely destroyed. He couldn't look. So when Christ is looking up, looking for His Father, the Father turned His face to hide His tears. In Matthew 27, 51, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. This opens up the Holy of Holies for all of us. We can approach the throne. We don't need to have somebody special to take us there. Christ is that mediator. He's done it for us. We all have access to the kingdom, if so chosen. The whole world can come to God the Father through Christ in His royal chamber. What a magnificent chamber that's depicted in, in Isaiah 6. Christ's robe filled the throne room. Filled it. That's massive. Christ wasn't done yet with his work, though. When he said tetelaske, he was not referring to the work being finished. It was the fact that he had lived a sinless life. We have no comprehension of how truly hard that is. The only one that could succeed in that is Christ in the flesh. God. Emmanuel, God with us. So on Sunday morning he was resurrected. The angel stood guard and the frightened Mary. Backing up just a moment, he ascended to hell. We know this. The Bible said it multiple times from Psalm into Acts chapter 2. He had to pay that price in full. He didn't do a half atonement for us. Full atonement. And then he had to bring the blood to the mercy seat, which we preached on last week. What she found was two angels standing before where the covenant was laid. Our new covenant. The image that you should have in your mind is just as, as the ark depicts the two massive angels protecting it. Christ is our new covenant. That's the image that you should see in your mind with the angels standing around the tomb. And Christ's linen were folded and the napkin were set aside. This is a very important part of what we see here in Scripture because in Jewish tradition, it's a sign. Okay, When, when a master sits down at a table and he's eating his meal after he's wiped all the food out of his beard, if he is done, he tosses the napkin down, just casts it there. But if he's not finished, he folds it up and sets it aside. He's coming back. He is risen and he will return, is what he's telling. That's a sign, not just for us, but for the Jews, because they needed to know that. And Mary saw Jesus on the road. He was unrecognizable. I wonder why. He began, he had become, he was becoming the celestial being. And he told Mary, 
to have the others meet him in Galilee on the mountain. And a lot of them doubted. They were in, uh, arguing. We just watched him get killed. Mary, you got to be crazy. We can't believe this. This is some kind of gossip from a woman, which is what they believed back then. We don't listen to the, the words of women because they're gossipers. Why do you think Christ chose Mary? To defy these things. Still in despair, I'm sure, they were probably completely lost in their minds and hearts. How could their king die? Where did he go? And he told them, where I'm going, you cannot follow. But I will prepare a place for you. Confused to say the least, his message was clear. Turn to Mark 16. Incidentally, if you did not know, Mark 16 in our King James Bible is not in the other Bibles. Mm. Because the Codex Sinaiticus omitted it. What is it? Mark 16. Constantine Simonides was instructed to omit the ascension of Christ. Verse 15. Chapter 16, verse 15. Go, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall not shall be damned. This is the last ordinance that Christ gave us. Again, it's a bookend. First ordinance is be fruitful physically. The last ordinance is fruitful spiritually. If we seek to know and desire to know Christ, and we seek to desire and follow Him, His instruction to be fishers of men, to go. In addition to be known by Him and the Father. We're going to close in, in uh, Matthew 28. It is so imperative for us as Christians to understand the full value and the meaning of the resurrection. When we are buried in the water and we come out in newness of life, we're giving our life to the Lord, committing ourselves to Christ, washed clean, Prepared for the marriage. No. This day should be in our minds every day. No. Every day. We should have that crucifixion in our minds. He did that for us. What did we do to deserve that? Nothing. Understanding that his, literally the skin was taken off of his body. Now, I don't know if any of you have been cut or stabbed before. I, I've been stabbed. Uh, I've been cut many times. That is excruciatingly painful. And then, of course, dislocating? That hurts. I dislocated my shoulder bench pressing years and years ago. I thought my shoulder would never heal. It hurt. Almost made me want to vomit. Christ had his elbows and his shoulders dislocated. Just exaggerating the stretching of his arms. We need to think about that all the time. Remember why. It's our sins that put him there. Matthew 28, in the end of the Sabbath, it was beginning, began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven 
and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. And his countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angels answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know what ye seek, Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. And they go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, goeth before you in Galilee, and ye shall, shall ye see him. And lo, I have told you. And he departed quickly from the sepulcher, and fear of the, and great joy. And did run and bring this, bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail! And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. No. Folks, do you understand it? When he came down with the cross, some of those wounds were not gone. In fact, we are all familiar with the story of Thomas putting his hand in the hole in his side. So when they're down at his feet, they're seeing the hole where a nail's driven through his feet. And he said unto them, Be not afraid, go and tell brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. And now when they were going, behold, some of the, the, the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief of priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money to the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ear, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and it did as they were taught, and are saying it is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. That is actually what they teach in the Talmud. They also teach that Christ is boiling in excrement. And the eleven disciples went away to Galilee, into the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you even unto the end. Amen. Um, amen. I pray that the resurrection of our Lord remains in our sight and we seek Him daily, understanding what really transpired that day. Arrested, crucified on Saturday, and rose again. So, Pray that you keep that in the forefront of your mind. It should be every day that you're thinking upon this and thanking the Lord for what He's done. God the Father, Christ and the Holy Spirit knew before the beginning of time Jesus had to come. Jesus was fully aware when Christ said, take this cup from me, He was referring to the wrath of God that was going to be poured out upon Him. Nothing happened that day that was not within the control of our Father. But it had to be done. No other way to atone except with the blood of Christ. And that was a lot of blood. Most humans would have died at that day, that moment when the, the Romans were peeling the skin off of them. Most humans would have been dead. They would have lost a lot of blood. They would have probably had a heart attack and died. Literally. Christ survived all of that. For us. <laughs> so unworthy. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for sending your Son that through him we may be atoned for our sins. We are grateful that we have eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Looking forward to seeing him and being with him for all eternity.
Lord, we do not take these things for granted. We don't take these things lightly. Things that you've done, none of us could do. Becoming sin for all of us. Lord, we can only serve you daily in, in, in thanksgiving for what you've done. All eternity will be not enough to thank you for the grace that you've given us. Amen. 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 Amen.